You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening. We don't care, we just appreciate that you're listening. My name is Paul. <laughs> That's absolutely true. Thank you for listening. My name is Rob. This is episode 964. And uh, maybe we'll try to be a little more enthusiastic for this show than the last one. I only say that because you said we we weren't very enthusiastic on the last one, but we're going to kill it this time. I've got an idea for the thousandth episode party. Really? Yes. Do tell. Okay. Bonfire... At the Drone U Field, no one drinks until all of the M600s dressed up as Star Wars vehicles do fly by of the field. All of the M600s? Well, we could definitely pull... We, oh, one, two, we could get at least four out here. Oh, really? Yeah. Get some lights on them to make them look like, you know, like the Death Star and all that. So we're obviously doing this at night. Yeah. I mean, like, well, you know, I, I would do it right at, you know, Dust. Civil Twilight. So, <laughs> I should have used the appropriate terms, <laughs> being Civil Twilight. Huh, all right, and so are we recording a show out there? That's just a post-show it party. It would be a really cool, like, we could get, you know, a couple of our video guys to do a quick shot of, like, a bunch of us and our friends out there on the field in the shape of a U, and then these huge big birds do a flyby with LED lights on the bottom of them, and then one, you know, drone flies away from the other, to make it look very symbolic. I like it. Why not? Why not? I mean, but we're still interested in your ideas, too. Yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to feed the idea train here, okay? Yeah, support at thedroneu.com for your ideas. Anyway, we are excited about today's show, though, because it's a, it's a question that doesn't really have a solid answer. It's a question that it really depends. Well, I guess like all questions, it depends, right, as far as the answer is concerned? True. That being said, uh, we're going to try to navigate this scenario because we have a very specific question about which drone to use, and a lot of people are, are seeing some of these issues that these more expensive drones are having, and they're just like, maybe the solution is cheaper than I believe. And I think a lot of public safety teams have been uh, noticing that as well. So I'm excited to kind of talk about this question today, which is really showcasing how can I do these roof inspections to showcase relative thermal temperature differences and maybe even do like efficiency on windows and roofs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But with which drone? If I've already got an Inspire 1, should I fly the XT? Or should I just, you know, pack up the Inspire 1, the original Ferrari, the drone that all of the drone masters, including Drone Jesus, it's their favorite drone. It's my favorite drone. It's Drone Jesus's favorite drone. Like... (laughs) You can't play with the Inspire 1. Like, it is the original Ferrari. And that's not to say that it's not the Lambo. Technically, it is Lambo because it's all-wheel drive, all-prop drive. Never mind. Anyway, (laughs) uh, that was a dad joke. (laughs) (laughs) But it's one of the the most fun drones ever to fly. It just has a lot of horsepower. It's got a lot of stability, and it's got a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Which we kind of lost some of the flexibility on the Inspire 2 as whoever is in charge with the maximum yaw input as an engineer. Francisco, if that's you, I'm really disappointed in you. Um, but um, someone totally turned down this, the expos on the uh, yaw. On- I wonder why. Either way, it's not as much fun to fly. That's what I'm just trying to get at. So let's go ahead and let's hear today's question. Uh, which is brought to you by our friends at the NTSB Training Academy. If you're in public safety or you just love mapping and you really want to have some real-world advanced missions to go over accident reconstruction or to go over advanced mapping, then you will not want to miss, you won't want to miss, the Drone You Accident Reconstruction Training at the NTSB Training Academy. It will be a four-day long class. We also have a flight mastery class right before that. So if you really want to gain confidence and go through a systematic approach for flying that will leave you with confidence and the ability to fly um, in close proximity to obstacles, then you're not going to want to miss that class either. You can check out these classes. Just go to droneu.education, scroll down to events, click that page, and check it out. I promise you won't want to miss this. If you are a DroneU member, we just posted a discount code for DroneU members, and you got to go in the group. Look, look for my name. Just search Paul NTSB. Guess what? 
you're going to find the code. It's a pretty solid discount, too. Yeah, if you're not a Drone you member, well, it sucks to suck. <laughs> well, you don't suck, but we'd love to see you be a member. Here's a question. Hey, guys, this is Rick from upstate New York. Quick question about mapping roofing jobs with the Mavic 2 Dual. Uh, I have an Inspire 1, and I'm considering getting rid of the Inspire 1 and buying a Mavic Dual to start doing roof inspections uh, to be able to do relative uh, temperature differences. But would I be better off to get an XT for the Inspire 1, or should I just go with the Dual because it also has the visual camera? Just wondering what your ideas are on that. Thanks. Hmm. Thank you very much for the question, Rick. As Paul indicated before playing the question, that is a very good one. And uh, we know you have a good one as well, so get it in. At AskDroneU.com, we definitely want to hear from all of you. How much is an XT camera? Ooh, let's actually just go ahead and uh, go to DJI.com and look up what the XT is, because the XT is a little bit different from the XT2. Okay, so professional. Where are we? Enterprise. Enterprise. XT. The XT camera, Zenmuse XT, here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, we want to buy, DJI. Where's the buy button? Making this buy thing a little Come on, too difficult. Take my money. Okay, there's no buy. All right. Let's Go see. To the store? Buy DJI XT. You know, I think this is like reminiscent of how DJI has been treating their enterprise people. This says $12,000 refurbished. Wow, you get an XT2 a lot cheaper than that. And that's at uh, B&H. I thought it was like five or six grand. This now. says as low as six grand yeah. at OEM cameras. This goes to show for all of you uh, drone stores out there, it probably helps to have the pricing on your website. Just just throwing it out there. Hold on. I just added it to my cart. Just show me the cart. Let's see if drone nerds. Hold on. I'm trying to trying to buck the system. Boom! Buck the system. Drone nerds, $13,725. Make you holla. <laughs> um, I wonder, so... I, I got to say, seeing the price point of this camera, it totally negates everything I told you in pre-show about my seriously? dilemma about answering this question. Yeah. Um, I mean, so we were going to go through like, hey, what's you know what's the best drone for this this problem? You know, because an Inspire 1 is pretty cheap. You can get it pretty cheap. You know, the different... the Mavic, Especially when you already have one. True, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, very small thermal sensor. I think it's literally 150 or 160 pixels across. Very, 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 very small sensor. What does that mean? Got to fly a lot closer to get the same caliber of image that you could get with the FLIR XT camera. But looking at the price point, OEM cameras, six grand. Here, drone nerds, 13,725. But this is a radiometric camera, so I'm not sure which sensor size that is. But either way... Frankly, that is too much money. If this guy wants to do these roof inspections, maybe he's got an inspection company, whatever it is, I'm going Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, hands down, no questions asked, because I've learned my lesson in buying expensive DJI equipment and then it not being reliable. Right. The, the Mavic series always works. Yeah. The Phantom series always works. I mean, like we just did that show where we're talking about, you know, I want to fly a you know, really nice camera, and I want to do all these things. Fly a damn Phantom, because you know what? It's going to work every damn time. <laughs> That's why. You also get no, Very reliable. no BS. You're going to get 4K60. It's not going to crop in on the sensor like an X7. You're just going to get it. It's going to work. And frankly, we still live in a world where 90% of people are looking at videos on their damn phone, so they're not going to be able to see the difference between 4K from an X7 Super 35 camera and, and you know, uh, the equivalent of an X4S on a Phantom. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this. Uh, you said that you're going to have to fly Getting short. Getting off the high horse now. No, no, you're good. You're going to have to fly closer to the object with the Mavic. How much closer? What What are we talking about here? You need to be within six inches. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but how close do you need to be relative to using the XT? This all depends on the lens that's on the camera. So, for example, on an XT camera or XT2, you can have a 13 millimeter lens, oh, a 19 millimeter lens. All these options. Yeah, there's so many lens options. So, there's a lot of different options. That being said, it really could vary. I mean, you could have the Inspire flying at 60 feet versus the Mavic 2 Enterprise at 20 feet. But okay. you could do it from 20 feet. 
you might have to be a little bit closer than 20 feet. You have to maybe like 15 feet, but okay. from your subject. But that only becomes a problem when you're living on, you know, in Washington state where you got redwood trees or you're living in the Northeast where you got really tall trees. Mm. And sometimes you're just not going to be able to fly that close to the roof. In that case, you need to take a flight mastery course, learn about proximity flight and prop guards, problem solved. And then have fun with it. You have so much more fun because it becomes a challenge right. and you're constantly like trying new things. And this is how you grow as a pilot, right? Perfect practice model. Remember, we talked about that a yep. long time ago. It's been a while. It but has true. been a while. But anyway, long story short, um, Mavic 2, let's see how much that is actually now. I'm really interested. I saw it for 2800 2900 Okay. Hold on. Checking. We've got the item list right here. Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual is twenty nine forty nine, and there's uh, our price point. Mm-hmm. Nice. So. Yeah, so right at twenty nine three grand, and that's without any extra batteries and all that stuff. So true. You're gonna be also, a little higher than that, but I still. mean, let, let, let's really think this through, right? Mavic 2 Enterprise has self heating batteries. Inspire One does not. And it's just so much more mobile. A lot, a lot more right. quiet too. Quieter. Chances of being hit by the drone shooter a lot less. That's if nothing else, it's harder to hit. <laughs> it's a smaller target. <laughs> uh, That's not funny. It is funny. Um, but also, you would have the light that you could add. So if there's an area that you're having a hard time viewing, you could just pop that light on. Yeah. I don't know. I like going into this show. I was like, how do I say that the XT or the XT2, which you can't fly the XT2 on Inspire One, but let's say that you could fly the uh, the XT on Inspire One, which you can. I was going to be like, how do I tell the story that I think this is a better option because the Inspire can fly more difficult winds, thus more days out of the year. You don't have to fly as close. You'll get better data, but then you don't have a visual camera, mm-hmm. right? With the Inspire 1, it's, it's one or the other. Now, you can fly a backpack system. Like, uh, the backpack system that we have is from Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems, so I have to give them a plug because it's their camera. Um, but that being said... You know, it's not gimbal stabilized. And I learned the hard way doing a roof inspection where it was just a 15, 20 mile an hour wind. Half the photos were garbage Mm. because the drone just kept moving so violently. Right. So, I mean, I'm saying Mavic 2 Enterprise Duel as the winner here. I don't know. The, well, the, with the accessories, the self-heating batteries, the quiet props, it can get in smaller places than the Inspire 2. And it actually, because of the weight, flies really well in the wind. I just think hands down Enterprise Mavic Duel. Not to mention, if you've got a couple people working with you, you could have three of them, right? And be at different places at different times, making more money. Okay, so if we're talking business now, Bean Counter... We're always br- talking business, Bean aren't Counter we? Bean brings it in. <laughs> yes, we are. We are. Okay, if we're talking gross margins here, I'm not even considering an XT camera. Okay. Because myself, I know I have the skill to fly close enough to get anything I want. What does the XT camera give you that you cannot get with the dual? A much larger sensor, a radiometric camera, so it's giving you better thermal data. Um, The only thing is the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual has the isotherm feature versus the XT that does not. Okay. So the images that you're going to get with the dual are more than adequate to accomplish the job. For a roofing inspection, sure. If you're doing like... You know, if you're doing, like, infrastructure inspections, no. No, no, no. Not enough detail. Sorry. But, I mean, like, even when John McBride came on the show and talked about Mavic Enterprise Duel, and he's like, you know, what you can do and what you can't do, you know, at the end of the show, he was like, look, Paul, people can actually do a lot of work with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Duel. He's like, they just don't understand that how close they have to fly. Like, they just have to do everything closer, but you can do it. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, well, I kind of wish you would have just said that more concisely on the show. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, I guess this is our chance right now just to put it out there that, like, look, this this is a great little drone. And the fact that there's a dual camera on something the size of a Mavic is really powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. In fact, we just heard a story this morning talking to one of our nicest friends, hint, hint, um, about how they were using <laughs> Mavics. And uh, it, they, it's just a powerful drone. Yeah, absolutely. So. Hard to go wrong. Yes. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for our extendedly awkward show today. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> but hopefully informative. I, hopefully informative. Hopefully if we answered awkward. his question. In fact, uh, someone just asked us to be on a podcast about home inspections to talk very specifically about this drone. So okay. very, very excited to do that. But anyway, on that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is... 
ask. Drone you. 